Good morning, welcome to another weekend reading vlog. It's Saturday today, it's eight o'clock and I'm just about to go for a run. So I'm feeling quite good and on top of my day so far. It's been quite quite a difficult week, so I feel like going for a run, getting all my endorphins pumping is gonna be a good thing. I've got some good reading plans this weekend, so while I'm running, I'm gonna be listening to Black and British by David Olasogo, which I've just started about a chapter a chapter in, I think I've just listened to the introduction. It's quite long, as an audiobook it's something like 24 hours, um, and each chapter feels feels quite long. But so far, I'm really enjoying it. It's all about bringing back stories that have been previously ignored by historians. There's this idea that there were no black people in Britain at all before like the 1940s, 1950s, and um, right at the beginning, that I'm listening to, like the first chapter is looking at Roman Britain and how they've seen some like remains of people who are definitely were born or first generation like African descent like Romans who'd come to the UK and then lived their whole lives here um, and they could tell that they weren't slaves like people who were just like living among the communities um, so yeah it's really interesting so far and I'm assuming it's gonna sort of go through history as it goes on but it's a really it's really good to listen to so I'm enjoying that I'm also reading The Bass Rock by Evie Wilde because this is my book club pick for my Patreon book club for June and July so I'm a few chapters into this and I'm enjoying it so far but it's it's quite interesting that like the characters are like I don't want to say all over the place but it's almost like I can't see where it's going to go which is quite exciting um and normally with the book club reads I try to not read them like really quickly I like to kind of read them over the period so I can talk about them with others in the book club so if you're interested in joining there's a link in the description box below but I'm going to read some more of this but as I say, not try and like finish it this weekend. And in July, I thought it might be fun to try like the 30 books in 30 day challenge. I don't know why, <laughs> but I just thought, I, I've seen other people do it and it looks really fun. It will probably be very difficult and I don't know if I'll be able to do it during July. Um, I mean, I'm working as well, so <laughs> I can't really see me reading a book a day, but you know, we can but dream. So I'm planning, on reading some kind of shorter books or easier books or quicker books or something in July to try and do that challenge so I thought for the end of the end of June I'd appreciate some of the longer books on my TBR so something I would really like to get to this weekend is The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne which is like I want to say like 700 pages it's really really long but I've heard that it reads quite quickly um, and this is like the life and times of a, of a gay man in Ireland I believe um, it's quite difficult for me to explain before I've read it, but I think it's just his life, like from childhood onwards and relationships he's had and things like that. So, very much looking forward to this. So I'm just going to warm myself up and um, get out of my run. It's an absolutely beautiful day and it's been raining so much this week, so yeah, I'm looking forward to getting outside. everything already today listening to my audiobook on the run I've read about 120 pages of the hearts invisible furies um, and I'm really liking it I actually can see why people said you read it so quickly because I, I mean it's a big book but I feel like I'm about the percentage through it that an hour and a half or so is reading would would warrant so that's nice and it and I'm really enjoying it it's it's split up into different parts over this guy's life I am assuming and um, we're following Cyril the first part was the story of his mother who gets pregnant at 16 out of wedlock and is like banished from her very small Irish village and goes to live in Dublin um, where she gives birth to him and then has him adopted so there, there's like her story and then the second part that I've read is him growing up with his adoptive parents 
who are like quite rich and very eccentric and I'm really enjoying the tone of this book. It's bringing up lots of different themes of people's prejudices at the time because I think he's born in 1945 so we're like 40s and 50s in these first two bits um, but it's also quite funny as well like especially the second section where like his parents or his adoptive parents are just so like strange and peculiar and like eccentric funny rich people um and yeah it's not quite the tone i was expecting but what was i expecting you never know really do uh, before you pick something up so i'm very much enjoying this i think i might read a bit more of this later the bass rock oh, i thought it was further back but it's not hooray um i'm nearly halfway through this now so i might like put it down for this weekend so i can read a little bit more um throughout the next month but i'm enjoying this as well so this is set in three parts um in different periods of history there's one section which is very very long ago set where a young girl in like a medieval ish village i suppose is accused of witchcraft then you have a story taking place in i guess the 50s um, yeah, I'm assuming the 50s, to be fair. I don't really know what the time period is. Uh, where you have Ruth, who has moved to Berwick in Scotland with her husband and his sons. And then you have a modern day section with Vivian, who is the daughter of one of the sons. And she's going to clear out the house. Um, and she's kind of talking about her memories of Ruth, who's like her step-grandparent, I suppose. So we're getting kind of concurrent narratives of what's happening with Ruth in her timeline, I guess, and like Vivian's recollections of things that happened afterwards. You're getting quite a lot of different narratives at once. And also, I, it, I'm just really seeing how like violence against women is so, it's like steeped through the whole novel um, in little asides and in stories that are happening in between chapters and also just some of the themes that's that's coming through with our with our three main characters so yeah it's coming together very very interestingly but i'm very pleased i picked it for the book club I'm really excited to read it and i'm going to read some more of john boyne i think this afternoon um i haven't vlogged the whole day obviously and it's like nearly five o'clock now so i'll probably do some dinner soon um hmm Maybe I'll listen to my audiobook while I cook some dinner and uh, yeah, then I'm seeing my friends Stephen and Jenny for our little Disney Saturday evening um, meet-up that we normally do. Well, I'm assuming, I'm assuming I'm meeting them. It's been a nice little routine in lockdown um, to spend some Saturday evenings with them, so hopefully we're doing that later.
Today is an exciting day because uh, my parents are going to come up and see us. So we've not seen anyone basically for three months because um, because of where we live and there's no one we can like walk to any easy vicinity. But um, my parents are going to drive up here today and we're going to go sit in the park. But it's, it's been a bit like we haven't known what time they're going to come because the weather's been a bit sketchy. So it's like, is it going to rain? Is it not? But I think it's clearing up now. Um, and we're going to go and see them. We better get our picnic blanket and everything together. I feel like really um, like nervous. It's strange. We were talking about like, oh, shall we just create, you know, like a social bubble or something, and we could go and stay around there or something. But then at the last minute, we we kind of got a bit nervous about it all uh, because we've literally not seen anyone. <laughs> so we thought, let's build us, let's build ourselves up to it. We'll have a nice picnic. Um, although I don't, we've already eaten breakfast, so we'll just sit in the park and have a chat. Uh, and then we'll think about it. We'll see how things develop in the in the coming weeks because obviously it changes all the time. Um, so yeah, that's nice. Oh, the sun is really coming out now. So that's that's good. I'm just waiting for a text from them to say that they're uh, they're nearly in, um, at the car park. It's going to be really hard not to hug them. Um, but I'm looking forward to actually spending some time <laughs> face to face with people. I've been feeling a bit jealous because lots of other people like have cars themselves or you know, live in walking distance of, of friends and have been able to see people outside and Will and I haven't yet. So I feel a bit like I need that. Uh, so yeah, I feel really weird. I feel really like nervous. Like, I don't know why I'm nervous. It's literally my mum and dad. <laughs> I'm just like, oh. We just got in, I'm actually so tired now, I'm just having a coffee. Will's gone out for a run, which I don't know how we could do. Um, I'm just really, I think just worn out, just because we were sitting outside and I was like squinting a lot, and like from talking and all of that. They were here for like nearly four hours in the end. So it's so nice, we just went and sat in the park, had a, had a chat. We were really rubbish and we didn't bring any food because we, I don't know what I thought. I thought like we've had breakfast but obviously we were there over lunchtime as well and they'd bought some food so we just ate, we ate some of theirs. Um, obviously once they were done with it, it was shop bought food and everything so they hadn't touched it but like, um, so that was nice. I'm glad they bought something but yeah, I'm just quite um, exhausted now, it's 20 past three and I've just realized that I haven't done, well, I was gonna film a video today for my Patreon uh, tier which gets an extra video per month and I was gonna film a video just giving a general like currently reading and like um, catch up on what I'm thinking of the Bass Rock but I'm like oh, I'm just really tired I haven't got any makeup on actually yet today um, so I'm a bit like oh I might perk up in a little bit I'm just gonna have my coffee maybe have a bit um, of a read and you know it's light till the evening now so I can always do that video later on if I fancy it I don't have to cook today because we've got some leftover curry from um, the other day so yeah, maybe that. I'm very much enjoying the Hearts Invisibles Furies up to where I got like from uh, yesterday evening. I'm really enjoying the voice. It's balancing really well a lot of quite seemingly disparate things. Like there's lots of bad things happening in this book. Um, you know, it's, it's set at a time where homosexuality is illegal and Cyril is at boarding school with, with boys and he's obviously realising his own sexuality and understanding that he's gay and he's struggling with that within a Catholic society. You've also got what happened at the beginning, like his mum being cast out from her home for getting pregnant at 16 and all of the, the hypocrisies of the society, how it deals with men and women, is examined really well and also how it's how society deals with gay people um, is, you know, obviously not nice, right? There's been some violence already um, in the book. Also just Cyril's general relationship with his adoptive parents is just so distant and it's, and it's really sad um, that he doesn't really have very much love or security in his, in his life. But having said all of those things, 
it's really funny and like the people are so sort of weird and eccentric and it's it's quite farcical some of the situations they're finding themselves in i'm very much enjoying it i think i will keep reading that and fingers crossed my coffee like perks me up a little bit <laughs> so i can be a bit more productive later but i guess i have been productive i've seen my mum and dad and that was lovely and it just felt normal it was a bit sad when we couldn't hug like at the beginning and also at the end when we say goodbye but it just felt it just is that step closer to normality um which is just so helpful i think i really needed that did not do a video <laughs> i got really into for some reason i could just got into my spotify playlists and like just thinking about music and finding new music and like rejigging my playlists because i have like a monthly one that i um that i do um and i was getting ideas for like next month and the month after and it's like arranging all the all the songs and then i just like read but i just didn't do anything but it's fun it's good to have a relaxing a relaxing day and um I think that's just what I'm gonna do now. Just keep reading my book. Would you take a look at this little grey man I have here? Grey and navy. Grey, every shade of grey. <laughs> <laughs> He's disappearing into the sofa on the balcony. Will's reading. With an orange penguin book. So. What's happening in Jane Eyre? What's happening? Uh, where do you even begin? Um, <laughs> so she's the governess of. Um, what's it called? You, um, Thorn, you don't want me to explain. I don't want you to explain right. the whole plot. Okay. I just meant where are you up to? She's Will's at, not read it before. She's at so the point where it. there's. The, like after dinner party happening and she is with Adele and the ladies and gentlemen have come in and they're now talking about governesses and how crap they are oh. and obviously Jane Eyre is a governess so there's very much a uh, yeah issues of class are arising as, a, as I read so, oh right yeah. you enjoying it yeah it's good it's good I'm getting through it pretty quickly actually nearly yeah, halfway through lovely I'm um, I'm halfway through my book so I'm probably going to put it down now um, yeah, I can't believe how quickly I've got through this. It must be like 350 pages or something, just in, in a few hours, really. I've not read that much over the weekend. Um, but I am loving it. I think all the characters are just on like the right side of ridiculous. Like it's so much like funnier in a really kind of um, wry way, I suppose, because there's also a lot of like pain and sadness, but it's just very, dry it's like dry and also eccentric at the same time it's really interesting and i'm and i'm loving it really enjoying it but i might put it down now i'm not sure what we what we might go inside in a minute and watch like a country file or something just to just to close out our sunday sounds good which one then all right let's watch that yeah. let's, let's give it a try and see if we see if it's not one we've watched before what <sighs> In the heart of the French countryside, a magnificent chateau stood uncared for and abandoned. Then, five years ago, everything changed.